Hey, I'm Dr. Terence Espinosa. This video will cover the use of Logos 8 for Greek translation. There are a series of videos I've made on how to set up your Logos or how to use Logos for Hebrew. This is going to cover the Greek translation aspect of uh, Logos or Logos. I'm using Logos 8. I'm using Windows uh, PC. When I'm using a laptop that's running Windows 10, rather. Uh, and so uh, that's what the interface looks like here. You can use Logos on an app. You can use it on a Mac or, or iOS or on Android, or you can even use Logos through a browser. And so the interface may look slightly different than what you see here on the screen, but the functionality should be the same uh, for using Logos. So there are four main things I want to talk about then. One, uh, really just reiterate the, the places to go for further viewing if you want to go further in using Logos for Greek translation. Second of all, I want to use Logos in what I think is more of a traditional way where you have a Greek Bible opened up and then you, you click and open other books as needed. Thirdly, thirdly, we'll show you how to use an interlinear function of Logos to help with translation. And then fourthly, show you how to check your work against other translations in a pretty quick manner. So uh, there is a handout that goes with this video. The handout and the links themselves will be in the doobly-doo in the video description on wherever you're viewing this. Uh, and Logos itself has Logos help within the program. If you click F1, let's see, click F1, and you can search here for some help through Logos. You can also go to support.logos.com and find uh, find helps and guides there. Uh, Logos, again, can be used in a computer program, a mobile app, and it can even be used through uh, a browser. If you go to app.logos.com, you'll see a browser. And as long as you log in with your credentials, you'll have access to the books that you purchased for Logos. They also have faithlife.com as another portal. Again, use your Logos credentials. You can use some of the books or the books that you have in your account. So that's places to go for further viewing uh, beyond this introductory video here. Let's talk about using the Greek New Testament. Now I have to confess very openly, I don't have the latest edition. I've used Logos for 20 some odd years now, and I have uh, UBS 4, and I have Nestle Elan 27. And so while I have access to the hard copies in my office for this tutorial, we're still using an edition that's one edition outdated, at least in the year we're recording this. So that's why it's that way. I'm very aware that this isn't the newest edition, but that's okay. Logos will work the same whether it's the newest or older edition of it. So open your Greek New Testament. And we'll go with Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, just to go to the very beginning of our canonical order of our New Testament. And in my mind, this is just like opening up your Greek New Testament at, on a desk, and you may have some lexicons opened up on your desk as well. You may have some grammatical aids or advanced grammars or some commentaries all on your desk. And that's how I still think of using Logos. I start with the Greek New Testament, and then I, I work through translation as I, as I want, and then uh, I'll open books as needed. So let's go with, um, what Greece do? All right, Greece do. You can right click on a word and you can do a couple things. One, if you look, let me make this bigger for you, see if that helps. Nope, can't do that. So let me try again. <clears throat> okay, so I'm making the font a little bigger, making the window go all the way across your screen. Okay, so we're looking at Christu. Right click on the word, the lemma is Christos, right? This, this is a, a, um, a form, it's a genitive, it's, it's a form of Christos, so Christu. In Greek, that's nice to note. In this little box here where the mouse is moving around, nope, not there, down one more. <laughs> it says, look up. Those are the lexicons that I have in Logos. Now, there are um, certain, certainly other lexicons to use, but whatever you have in Logos will show up here. And if I want to look it up in a very specific lexicon, I click on it and look at that. It just shows up for you right away. So that's nice. You, you start with your Greek New Testament, you right click on a word and you look it up in a lexicon of your choosing. And you can make the, the font bigger or smaller by clicking three dots and by doing that or dragging the slider. And there we are. Okay, so that's one way to find a word is to right click and use this lookup function and click on one of the lexicons that shows up. You could also click on what's called a power lookup. So one more time, right click the word or probably long press on your phone, power lookup. Look at that. So this little information pane opened up on the side of my screen and it has Christos in a bunch of lexicons that I have on Logos. So if I wanted to read them again, I can click on them, but they're all right there for you to begin with, which is very nice, very handy tool to have. So that's right clicking on a word. Another way is to just, let's close this window, to double click a word. And double clicking on a word is set to open up a lexicon, and I chose the EDNT as the lexicon of choice given, and it's a good, it's a good lexicon. Uh, so it opens up that lexicon for me right away. 
Now, if I wanted to change this so they're not in tabs, I wanted to see them side by side, I can go to this layout button. There you are. If you wanted to go horizontally, you can do that. Uh, you can you can actually drag and move things around as you see fit. But this is a quick way to set the layout how you would like. Now within Logos, these little these three lines here, these are going to give you your contents pane that you can make bigger or smaller as needed, which can help you scroll through when you're looking for words in lexicon. In the lexicon, it's nice to to do that. To rather than flipping through pages, you can see it and scroll and find the word you're looking for. All right, so that was another way of looking at a words meaning. Let's close this up and do this again. Uh, open up Nestle Elon. This is the one I have. You open up the lexicon that you want, or the Bible that you want, excuse me. I'm going to make it go across the page, the fonts, the size I want. Uh, if you wanted to make a shortcut to this book or any book, you can grab the tab from Logos and drag it up here, wherever you want. I'll put it here. Now, I've done this already, so I now have two shortcuts to the same book, and that's okay. And if you do that, when you open up Logos, you can click on that shortcut. There we are. Look at that. Okay, so Matthew 1. Uh, one more time. This is the last time I will reopen this page. So we can go on to the next bit here. So Matthew 1, make it bigger. That's control plus sign or control minus is a shortcut to make your font bigger or smaller. And on a Mac, I'm sure it's the Apple bar, the Apple button. Okay, so that's that's all ways to use the lexicon. Another one last thing you can do. If you have it opened up, uh, you can, or even if you don't, go to the tools button. So it's the top row of the Logos program. It's Docs, Guides, Tools. Go to Tools and open up this Information Buttons, Information Pane. So if that Information Pane is opened up, when you mouse over a word, the word will appear in the Information Pane. Look at that. So great. Uh, there. And so again, you can have, you can see the word, you can see definitions, you can see other information on the Information Pane all right there for you. If you look carefully, you also notice when you mouse over a word, on the very bottom of the screen, bottom left side is a very skinny snippet view that's also the same color as the page. We'll tell you, it'll tell you the word. It'll tell you some parsing information. It gives you a low Oneida uh, reference. It tells you a very, very basic gloss for it. And that's great. So if you mouse over Word and Logos, you'll have a little thing pop up already for you. And if you open up the information pane, you'll have additional information at hand right away. The last thing I want to show you, uh, if you see a, a Greek word and you want to look into it further, we've covered looking up a lexicon or looking up in all your lexica. Uh, there's a web lookup on the Perseus um, website, which is a fantastic site to be familiar with, but that's another video another time. Bible word study. This is, is, is glorious. Click on Bible word study and you'll see this beautiful color thing will show up for you. So it tells you the lemma and it gives you right away the lexicons that you have. So you can click on those. There's a little um, visual here showing you where the word is used. So this is Christos, Christ. I mean, look at that. Mark has seven times. Look at that. That's interesting, right? You can look at Luke at 12, John, Acts a bunch of times, Romans 65. Holy smoke. Look at this. And these are much smaller than the gospel. So that's that's telling about this, this term itself. And you, of course, would do more research. But that's it's a nice graphic to have. You can go down and see how the word is translated. I have it set to NIV. You can change this to whatever Bible you want to use. And you can see how Christos has been translated, mostly Christ, sometimes Messiah, uh, rarely anointed him. And then you can see, so that's that's a very nice thing you can see as well. You can change this in settings to have a different Bible translation show up. And again, the graph now reflects the English Bible you're looking at. Scrolling down, you have more information on the root uh, and, uh, and other, other you know, derived words. Uh, the senses of the word, so Christos, Christ in the middle, but you can see the senses based of how this is used, and you can click on it. it. Just this is an endless, it feels almost endless. You can click and click and click and follow ideas. But this is a very beautiful image that, that you have. I've actually used this in class before for certain words. I'll, I'll put this on a PowerPoint and show them and, and sing Logos' praises. You scroll down further, you have example uses. Again, according to the resource you have set, there's more information here. Clause participants, that's great. Preposition use, phrases, look at that. Go all the way to the bottom, you should arrive at textual searches. So this is Greek. This is the from based on the, the, the UBS4, it looks like. Uh, so the Septuagint uh, uses, uses Christos twice, two results and two verses. And I have a Septuagint on Lagos, so I can click on there and see where it is. New Testament, 529 results and 499 verses. Pseudepigrapha I have as well, Josephus, I believe I have that as well in Greek. And so if you have these resources in Lagos, it will also search in those resources 
for this Greek word, which is a valuable, valuable skill set, a valuable tool to have, which you can you can replicate this by looking at analog books uh, as well. And you can maybe um, confirm this is the case. But this is just a really fantastic, uh, fantastic tool. Look at that. And so. Oh, my goodness. There you are. So that's that's a more traditional way of looking at Logos for translation, where you start with the Greek text and you start right clicking and clicking around finding things. Now, for the third main section of this video, I want to talk about using an interlinear in Lagos. And so an interlinear, uh, there are two ways. One way, uh, you can open up a traditional book. So Lagos has a bunch of interlinears, uh, and it's already embedded in the, in the book pages. And so let's look at the, let's see, let's just Lexum. Let's find Lexum. Do they have Lexum Greek New Testament? I feel like I'm looking at it. Subtuitive vision. There we are. Oh, with SBL, GNT. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we'll look at that. Click on that. Look at that beautiful small font. We'll go to Matthew 1 just for parity with what we saw earlier. We'll make the font bigger. We'll make this go across the page. Okay, so there's no interlinear yet. So the interlinear is in the title. That's because there's a button here called interlinear. It's the, the Hebrew Aleph and, Alf, and the Greek Omega. Uh, so it's the two languages there. You click on that button, and now that's your interlinear. It will show up. You can right-click this, or you can click this drop-down menu and choose what you want to see in your interlinear. Look at that. Glorious. Low Oneida entry, Strong's number, and it's very helpful for Low Oneida because the way it's organized. So look at that. Man, inline interlinear using a, well, this is SBL um, GNT. That's fantastic. And so you can do that. If there are other books that are interlinears, you can open those as well. That's one way. And if you were to buy another interlinear, uh, you would open up and it looks like this. This does lead to the other way of using interlinear. Let's say you wanted to use an English text and let's go with NIV here. Uh, let's see, NIV. Let's unclick this just to make it look a little more impressive when we click the interlinear button. So I'm making the layout how I prefer, making the font bigger so we can see it. Now, Let's go to Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. There we are. Click on the interlinear button. Ta-da, look at that. And as before, you can click on the drop down and choose which items you want to see in your interlinear. So you can use interlinear from a Greek text. You can use interlinear from an English text. And as long as the English translation has allowed Lagos to do this to it, you'll have an interlinear capability within Lagos. So NIV looks like they've done that. ESV is usually really good about that. Common English Bible, let's give that a try. Nope, not there. It's a great translation, by the way. This is no slight on it whatsoever. It's just Lagos hasn't made an interlinear with it, and that's okay. That's all right. So as you as you work through Lagos, you have to figure out which translations you want to use, which translations have the interlinear capability, and then have and you go go <laughs> go for it. You jump into your interlinear uh, translation. All right, so there are three of the four things. The first thing we talked about was just basic further viewing at the Logos website and the options you have for using Logos or Logos, however you want to say it. Uh, the second thing we talked about is starting with the Greek New Testament. Uh, and you can you can open a Greek Bible and click on words or right click on words or do a word search function and they'll show up all show you all sorts of information there. And that's that's a that's how I tend to use it. If you want to use interlinear, you can use interlinear in Logos, and that's fine as well. We just covered that. And then lastly, I want to show you how to check your work. So let's open, let's open Nestle Alon this time. Nestle Alon, make it big. Now we've clicked on words this whole time. If you click on a verse, you'll see this text comparison option. So you're going to want to do text comparison for a verse. Look at that. So it opened up Matthew. There it is in Greek. It's a little small, but you can see it if you squint or hold it closer to your face, or of course, use it on your own Logos and set the settings how you want. It has the NIV, Common English Bible, uh, Nest, uh, NA, New American Standard Bible, and the Net Bible there, side by side by side by side. And so you've done the hard work of translation, and you have a sense of how the, how the verse should be translated, at least the way you're thinking about it. One way to check your work and across a number of translations is this way. You, you use the, the text comparison function of Logos. And you get there, one way to get there, is by clicking on the verse number, not the words, but the verse number. Right click on the verse number, click text comparison, and it'll take you to that text. And you can scroll around. You could even, once you're in here, you could type in um, you know, whatever verse you wanted. 
All right, well, that, that was the fourth thing of checking your work. You can modify this, I'm sure, and add more resources or add fewer resources. Uh, but this is a very nice tool to have in Lagos for translation. All right, well, that was it. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, uh, send me an email and we'll, we'll start communication that way. Um, but that's it. We'll talk to you next time. God bless you. Bye.